Flopsy and the Easter Bunny Olympics, part five of 40. Like every other Easter Bunny wannabe, I was assigned to a squad of 120 and introduced to my squadron leader. Our squadron leader's name was Sedronum, and after the brown turning to silver buck introduced himself, Sedronum led us 10 and over hopefuls onto the arena floor. Sedronum hopped along at the front of our 10 wide by 12 deep phallics as we 120 bunnies followed behind. I'd had a quick view of the other 119 bunnies in our squad and hadn't been surprised to see that I was the only white rabbit under Sedronum, though I'd seen others fall in with the remaining 12 squads. My squad looked to be a mixture of 100 plus brown bunnies, a handful of black, plus me. And as we marched, I was sure that each of us was feeling some mixture of hope, fear, disbelief, and determination, as a video of our squad along with the remaining 11 others with their 100 bunnies was broadcast on the Jumbotron's 12 screens. As all 12 squads marched to our first event, the spectators hooted, hollered, and stomped their feet in enthusiastic encouragement. Just as I'd been last month, I was awed to be among the 12 dozen hoppers present who had been deemed worthy of trying to be one of Monk's River's Easter bunnies. And as we marched to their applause, I had a brief vision of me not only becoming an Easter Bunny, but even earning the extra honor of moving on to compete in the Worldwide Easter Bunny Olympics. It was just short of a month since I'd seen the selected baby bunnies beaming broad smiles as they sat with their parents in the rows above the judges' seats following their competition. Each selected Easter Bunny somehow cuter than the one on either side as they smiled shyly but broadly down on we ten and overs who would either be joining them in triumph or who, like most of the baby bunnies who had just failed to become a Cherie Swan's Monks River Easter Bunny, would have to con content ourselves with knowing that we'd done our best and that there's always next Easter to hop for. The main competition would follow the same three-judge panel rule that had been used in the preliminaries. The three-judge rule was designed to keep any single judge from being able to eliminate a bunny who really earned the right to get passed through to the next round of judging from being thrown out unfairly or inappropriately. But in the, oh, how cute, poison pageantry judging, Tempestas Lacus would have the final and only word on every bunny's cuteness scores. Tempestas Lacus alone would determine how many of the, oh, how cute, 100 points a bunny deserved. Though bunnies nearly always received a poise and pageantry score between 40 to 65, Tempestus, the bunny who had repeatedly said that if white bunnies want their own Easter, then they should have their own separate games, would have sole discretion in delivering as many as 100 points to as many bunnies as he chose, a position that made him the single bunny who had the most control in deciding who would be among the 456 Monks River February Games representatives. Knowing Lacus's history of downright intolerance and denigration of white bunnies, I couldn't help but feel that I had zero hope of being selected as a Monks River Easter Bunny, no matter how well I did in the other 11 categories. Marching out onto the arena floor, my thoughts swirled around the decidedly lopsided power Lacus held in deciding who became an Easter Bunny. Thoughts that again made me upset that Placid Paws was out as head judge, judge and that Tempestus Lacus was in. Placid Paws was held in very high regards. He had served as the final central Shiwasuin judge for as long as I could remember. And I'd been counting on his sense of fairness and inclusion, making it even possible for me to earn a spot as an Easter Bunny. And not having him as a judge was something that weighed very, very heavily on my mind as I headed to the first set of compulsory.